Welcome to Entrepreneurship in Plant-Based Drugs. Today we are going to discuss about methods of extraction of phytochemicals. As we are developing a drug from plants, it is important that we isolate or extract the active ingredient that is responsible for the medicinal property. This can be attained through several basic techniques which we'll have a look today. Before going into the extraction methods, we need to look at some of the basic terminologies that you need to familiarize yourself for phytochemical extraction. Crude extract. When it comes to phytochemical extraction, the most rudimentary method is crude extract. Imagine you take a ginger or a turmeric and you heat it up in a, in a cup of water as you're making a tea or a decoction. The amount of phytochemicals or the type of phytochemicals dissolved in that will be hugely varied. This is called as a crude extraction as in you are trying to extract as many possible chemicals from the plant material into the liquid medium. The liquid medium however in traditional medicines is commonly water but in scientific methods in addition to water we use other solvents such as alcohols like uh, methanol, ethanol chloroforms, then petroleum ethers and uh, hexane etc. We have a lot of variety of solvents which we can use. All of those solvents, if you are performing a rudimentary process that is no focus on a particular material, you are trying to extract as many chemicals as possible from the plant material, then it is called as crude extract. A phytochemical fraction. This is a secondary step or a next step to crude extract. Crude extract contains all possible phytochemicals in the given material whereas the phytochemical fraction suggests that the phytochemical numbers has been reduced however a concentration of a specific class of molecules is increased drastically. This is by removing unwanted molecules or removing the uh, non-bioactive molecules from the crude extract. The best example would be the curcumin fraction or the curcumin capsule that is available in the market. Initially, the turmeric would be subjected for a crude extraction process after which a series of purification or fractionation techniques will be followed which increases the concentration of the curcumin. This not only has curcumin, it has other similar molecules or other class of molecules that are in the same category which are known to be bioactive. Why is it that the fraction is given rather than a pure compound is because of its synergistic properties. Plant materials usually give activity because it has a lot of medicinally valuable compounds rather than a single compound. Hence, phytochemical fractions are quite popular in plant-based drugs. Next is a pure compound or a pure phytochemical. In this particular process, a single phytochemical has been purified with greater than 99% purity and usually this is done for analytical and for investigation purposes and not as a medicinal value. Why? Because the amount of pure compound, let's take curcumin from turmeric, the yield or the quantity of the uh, single compound that you'd get from the plant material is very very meager, it's very less about less than 1% or less than that is the usual yield of a pure compound. Given that it is so less in the plant material, it would lead to a destruction of large amount of plant materials or the plant sources in order to obtain a decent amount of pure compound. Hence, for medicinal purposes in the scientific community, pure compounds are not directly administered like how you would have paracetamol or ibuprofen these are chemical synthetic drugs but the plant drugs or the plant based medicines they will not be usually administered in a pure form why because of the availability or the yield hence among the three crude extract phytochemical fraction and pure compound or pure phytochemical extract the phytochemical fraction is the most commonly suggested or commonly used plant-based medicine in the market. Moving on to the next section, what are the liquids or the solvents that we use for extraction? The solvents can be categorized into multiple categories, one of which is either polar or non-polar. What are polar solvents? Polar solvents are liquids that 
are having a charged property. These liquids can dissolve charged molecules, ions and electronegative molecules. Best examples of polar solvents include water, methanol, ethanol, chloroform, etc. Among this, water has the highest polarity, that is it is the most polar solvent among all the other liquids available. Non-polar solvents, on the other hand, these are liquids that do not have any charge or charged properties and they dissolve only similar molecules. That is, they dissolve oil-based or lipid-based molecules. Those molecules will not dissolve in polar solvents. So usually there is a cutoff or there is a margin where some molecules are usually soluble only in polar solvents where the others are soluble only in non-polar solvents. So this polar and non-polar category is the major category of the solvents for which we need to understand another phenomena that is like dissolves like. The polar solvents usually dissolve only polar molecules or polar solutes whereas the non-polar solute dissolve only in non-polar solvents. So this is a basic phenomenon in chemistry which also applies to phytochemicals that is when, when you use a polar solvent, you expect only polar molecules to be dissolved in them. So depending on the plant that you are working with, you need to choose which type of solvent that is whether a polar or a non-polar solvent, you need to choose ideally. Coming to the next category of solvents, first is the aqueous or water. In this category, only one solvent is properly used that is water itself, which is the popular method of preparing decoction or kashaya or, uh, or a cocktail where a plant material would be allowed to dissolve or it will be allowed to mix with water either under a heated or under a room temperature condition and the plant material will be filtered off with a tea restrainer and the water containing the chemicals will be used for further procedure. The best example is the kashaya, uh, ginger kashaya that we make in our home. The second category of solvents is organic solvents. These are solvents which are made up of organic elements which do not come under the water category. The best example is petroleum ether and chloroform. These organic solvents are usually based on carbon molecules. As compared to the previous one that is water is made up of H2O that is hydrogen and oxygen whereas in case of organic solvents they usually contain carbon as a key skeleton. There are other organic molecules but carbon serves as a key skeleton for this. The third category is the alcoholic solvents which includes molecules made up of carbon with added alcohol or hydroxyl group that is OH refers to the hydroxyl or alcoholic group. The solvents belonging to this category are methanol, ethanol, etc. It is to be noted that alcoholic solvents are usually volatile in nature. So as the organic solvents. Most of the organic solvents and alcoholic solvents, they are volatile in nature, meaning they will evaporate even at a room temperature if left for a long time. Unlike water, which takes a very long time to uh, evaporate, the organic solvents and alcoholic solvents are requiring lesser time and lesser temperature for them to become gaseous. This makes the organic solvents and alcoholic solvents more preferable in the scientific community as they can be dried much faster without application of heat because of their volatile property. Now let's go into the types or methods of extraction. One of the most basic method is maceration. A maceration is a process where you allow the plant material to soak in the given solvent or the liquid. For example, you take 10 grams of a plant material, soak it inside 100 ml of water and allow the water to stir or continuously mix for a period of 2 hours, 4 hours, 8 hours, 24 hours, 12 hours, etc. It can vary depending on the experiment that you are performing. During this incubation period of two hours or so, when the plant material is being stirred continuously, 
the plant chemical that is the phytochemicals present in the plant material will slowly start dissolving into the water or the liquid why is this incubation period given because the time taken for the phytochemicals to dissolve in the liquid is rather long it will not be very quick it will take a long time for the plant chemicals to leave the plant material and come into the liquid so this incubation period or the soaking period is required for all the phytochemicals or to retrieve maximum amount of chemicals from the plant material into the liquid this can be done with or without heating for example the best uh, uh, analogy would be the use of heat in preparation of a decoction where you are heating the water and then you are adding ginger or you are adding uh, tea leaves or coffee beans etc without providing heat the amount of phytochemicals coming into the liquid would be very less so heat usually increases the dissolution of the phytochemicals into the liquid and the speed at which the stirring happens is called as rpm meaning rotations per minute that also depends on the material that you are adding and the incubation period that you are providing and also the liquid that you are using this usually the maceration can be done for all type of solvents but the most preferred ones include alcohols and organic solvents that is because after the maceration is complete the liquid can simply be filtered through a restrainer and if you allow the solvent to be evaporated in room temperature or at mild heat per given all the solvents will evaporate and they will settle down in the bottom as a thick gooey sticky nature compound this is called as a crude extract i repeat after maceration incubation is over the liquid will be filtered through a restrainer and after filtration the liquid will be allowed to evaporate since alcohols and solvents have a low boiling point they will easily evaporate in room temperature leaving all the phytochemicals to deposit at the bottom as a thick gooey substance this is called as crude extract coming to the next step succinate extraction this method of succinate extraction is focused on increasing the amount of phytochemicals that you can extract from the plant material because in the previous maceration techniques the yield cannot be optimized even if you incubate it for 24 hours or 48 hours it is not possible to extract all the pos all the phytochemicals present in the material for that reason the succinate procedure is uh, developed which makes sure you can extract as much as possible even in some cases more than 99% of phytochemicals can be extracted from the plant material using this particular method this is a process where evaporation and condensation are being utilized at the same time or simultaneously for example if you look at this animation that's given here what is happening in this bottom uh, flask the round bottom flask is that here the organic solvent either organic or alcoholic methanol or uh, chloroform or pet ether or ethanol any solvent is kept here this bottom instrument what you are seeing here this is a heat plate or a hot plate this will heat or it will evaporate the solvent present in this flask which as you can see the vapors are passing through this chamber it's going through this route and it is going to the escape on the top here like a chimney however the chimney setup is connected with a cooling water as you can see here there is a water inlet and a water outlet what happens when the gaseous form of the solvent passes through this setup through this exit setup the cold water that is running through the glass setup will cool it or will bring it back to a liquid form which will then fall on to this particular tube this tube is nothing but it is a plant material the plant material is kept in this tube which when it is filled with the uh, liquid the ethanol or methanol or whatever it is the ethan because it is a so organic solvent it will dissolve all the compound and it will fill to a certain point as you can see here it fills to a certain point here after which all the solvents will come back again to the bottom flask this is a chain reaction as in the evaporation happens here 
the vapors pass through the chimney it gets condensation or it gets converted back into liquid and the liquid falls onto the plant material and once enough amount of uh, liquid is up accumulated here it comes back to the flask this mechanism goes on for one hour two hour or three hours depending on your particular experiment and the plant material the amount of material you add etc once this is done you can ensure that the amount of phytochemicals or the crude extract that you obtained from this particular plant material will be higher than the uh, yield that you got from the maceration technique so as i mentioned this involves evaporation and condensation the only solvents that can be used here is organic or alcoholic solvents and water cannot be used it is not recommended that water to be used in this particular setup as it takes a longer time for it to boil but it is only for organic and alcoholic solvents coming to the third method which is lyophilization what happens that if the bioactive molecules or the medicinal chemicals present in the plant material dissolves only in water there are some chemicals which does not dissolve in any of the organic or uh, alcoholic solvents but it preferably so dissolves only in water that is aqueous medium if you want to remove the chemicals from the water it is tedious process where you have to heat the water in order to evaporate it but during the heating process it is possible that the chemical will denature or it will lose its activity it will lose its medicinal property so this technique was developed that is lyophilization also called as freeze drying what is this technique is that when a particular chemical is dissolved in water the process of removing the water from the chemical without heating is called as lyophilization in this imagine you have a plant material in water which you have macerated for 3 hours or 4 hours after which you filter the extract now you have a bowl of 100 ml of water which contains the phytochemicals now you want to remove the water without damaging the phytochemicals first step you would do is to freeze the water to ice so the entire extract that is the decoction will be frozen as a cube as an ice cube or an ice block then it will be placed under a vacuum machine or it will be placed in a chamber where it is fully vacuum when the ice block is placed inside the vacuum chamber the water present inside the ice block will directly become a water vapor instead of getting converted into a liquid from the frozen solid state it will directly become a gaseous molecule this process is called as sublimation where in vacuum the water molecules that are present in the ice will directly become water vapors this process is done only for water based extracts so this method is called as removal of water without heating all right whereas you have other techniques for concentration of uh, organic or alcoholic solvents the only method for concentration of water based extracts is lyophilization i hope the three techniques that i explained are clear i'll catch up with you in the next video thank you